Good morning and thank you for joining us for today's Tech in 20 demonstration of Aruba Edge Connect SD-WAN platform. In today's demo, you'll learn how the Aruba Edge Connect SD-WAN delivers a business-first networking model using business intent overlays and how Aruba Boost technology helps improve network latency and bandwidth performance when it is needed. Today's demonstration is being given by Brian Graham, Aruba Channel SE, and Mike DeVita, Principal Mobility Architect at Vandas. We are recording today's demonstration, so a quick reminder to keep your microphones muted. All questions can be addressed at the end of the session. For those of you who are new to Vandas, Vandas provides managed services and IT solutions to optimize the security and performance of network infrastructures, both on-premise and in the cloud. We design IT solutions to meet each organization's unique needs and goals. For over 38 years from mid-market to enterprise clients, Vandas has delivered comprehensive strategies for secure IT infrastructures. And now I'll turn it over to Brian and Mike to begin the demonstration. Uh, thank you, Joanne. Uh, good morning, everybody. Let's proceed to the, uh, the first slide of the deck. And uh, my goal today is to uh, not only speak about uh, three features, business intent overlay, BIOS, uh, boost uh, WAN optimization, and uh, flow monitoring, how we monitor uh, the flows in our crap, in our, in our uh, fabric. So the first slide here is relative to describing how it all happens. The orchestrator is a policy manager, it's a configuration manager, it's a uh, event manager, uh, it can even create trouble tickets. It's the uh, single pane of glass that manages all of our edge connects, whether they're physical, virtual, or in the cloud. And finally, we have the boost component that uh, provides on-demand WAN optimization, as I will show you uh, shortly. Business intent overlays are what we call the sweets, the special sauce uh, inside of our uh, our feature sets for SD WAN, and the way that we do it is we try to simplify uh, the uh, construct of an overlay on top of your circuits, which would be right here: circuits, MPLS, Internet, LTE. That would be the underlay, and again, the special sauce or the overlay is the uh, is the uh, capability that we provide to uh, set up a a bios a uh, a topology configuration whether it's mesh or hub and spoke uh, and also the uh, link bonding which actually bonds these connections together in this case mpls internet and, and internet would be the primary bonded together and then you'd have a secondary backup of lte this is a example of the applications that can fit inside of this BIOS. In this case, it's web and video. Uh, and then uh, we also do firewalling uh, and, uh, you know, provide uh, capabilities within the product to bypass the firewall or literally be a zone based firewall uh, inside of the BIOS. Now, there are different BIOSes for different applications and the link bonding uh, is uh, important for each particular uh, overlay. The first time, the first one is real-time overlay, and this is voice and video, so we have a mesh topology. The second one is uh, mission critical or enterprise apps overlay. You can see the uh, mission critical apps right here, and this would be more in line with the hub and spoke, uh, but uh, generally, the look and feel is the same. The idea is that we provide link bonding here for automation when a service level agreement is violated. The MPLS can simply cut over to the internet and uh, provide a, uh, a smooth cut over uh, with uh, applications not being interrupted. And then finally, we'll have a default overlay that would be all of the other capability uh, as far as YouTube, Facebook, uh, all of the uh, not so important uh, applications, if you will, uh, and uh, inside of this particular overlay. And we'll, we'll get more in depth with this when I open up the actual uh, web, the orchestrator GUI. 
WAN optimization, as I said, is a uh, is a feature inside of uh, the SD WAN solution that we provide called Edge Connect, and it was really the genesis of our company. Uh, eight years ago, all we did was WAN optimization, and we competed against the likes of uh, Riverbed. What we did moving forward was we created an SD WAN solution that allowed WAN optimization to be licensed inside of it, and uh, TCP connectivity uh, is enhanced by uh, deduplication and uh, uh, TCP windowing optimization uh, to uh, improve latency as well. So bandwidth savings and latency are what you can get from WAN optimization, and I will demonstrate that. I'm going to go to the, uh, the demonstration right now, and this is the WAN uh, this is the orchestrator, and I'm showing business intent overlays over here. We have four of them. You can have up to seven, but each one is set up in a particular manner. Uh, so let's go to bulk apps right here, and you can see that we use a mesh topology for this given uh, demonstration, and you can see the link bonding here of these two uh, circuits, so internet and MPLS. You can see our service level agreements over here, and uh, you can see where we turn on boost on and off to enable it for a given business intent overlay. I'll take a quick look at the overlay ACL to show you what's in there. So this is how simple it is. We have tremendous application visibility, so we simply identify an application note FTP and we put it inside a given overlay ACL and that is for that particular BIOS. So Brian, if I can interrupt you for a second here, um, can you explain a little bit of difference uh, in the link bonding policies and how Boost works here? What yeah. the differences are? Yeah, that's it's link bonding uh, comes with path conditioning and path conditioning uh, is there as an option on all of your BIOS and we start with high availability and we do something called forward error correction. Forward error correction is capable of, you know, doing a one for one uh, packet analysis and copy. So if you go with high availability for your business intent overlay, your data is is going to be a sub second failover and and literally a hitless failover. You do this more so with uh, voice and video, as I said, uh, in a mesh configuration. Uh, but high quality would be the next one, which is a dynamic forward error correction. We use a five to one ratio, and if the link is running fine, then you're not giving up additional bandwidth to uh, to stripe, almost like a raid. Uh, configuration on a, uh, a set of servers to stripe it to uh, to match data per uh, per byte. So this is a five to one ratio, whereas high availability is a one to one ratio uh, and uh, less than a second failover. And then finally, you have uh, high throughput and high efficiency. High efficiency has no forward error correction. Uh, high throughput does but uh, the difference is that they uh, do load balancing. So you can do load balancing with these link bonding policies and they all uh, fit the given uh, design configuration based on your business applications. That's why uh, the business intent overlay exists actually to allow you to make decisions not on network flow, but on business applications. So for those middle two, the high availability, high quality and high throughput, those dynamically adjust? Yes. So the beauty of this is that these are dynamic forward error correction, and this uh, particular high availability is a one-to-one -one ratio. So, you know, 50% of your data in this configuration, if this were selected, would be dedicated to um, matching the data, the actual real data. But with uh, high quality, which is probably the most popular one, uh, you have a dynamic capability of five to one, and that ratio uh, gets adjusted based on the quality of your circuits. Are you good, Mike? 
Yeah, no, that was great. Thank you. OK, OK, so the next step that we're going to do is we're going to actually open up, open up a FTP server, my file Zilla. And what I intend to do with boost off. So before turning on boost, I'm going to copy a using a TCP application called FTP. I'm going to copy from London over to San Francisco by simply dragging and dropping this particular low, I mean a FTP file, and I will run it over. And you can see down here that it's running and it's, uh, you know, it's a little bit uh, slow. You know, I mean, it's, it's moving along, but there isn't any boost optimization uh, being applied at this point. And let's take a look at how we monitor this. We use it doing using something called flow monitor. And you can see right here that uh, if you look closely, outbound WAN bytes, 103 meg. OK, so there's no uh, latency improvements. There's no uh, compression involved here. It's just straight without any kind of WAN optimization, which is what we call boost. And it started here. This is uh, Pacific time, by the way. And uh, it, it took relatively about 17 seconds to complete 15 seconds, as you can see right here. OK, so now we're going to go back and we are going to turn on. Uh, WAN optimization for this given overlay. And uh, all I have to do is simply turn it on. Apply it and then again, this is a policy manager that pushes out to uh, my devices, which are shown on the left here. Uh, so I'm actually looking over here. You can see the orchestrator ETA flashing. So this takes a relatively short amount of time. Uh, and once that's complete, I will go back to FTP and I will run the same file transfer and uh, we'll try to uh, analyze the uh, the difference, which uh, is so while that applies, Brian, um, how does how is Boost licensed within the platform? Is that just a, a feature? Or do you have to? Is there a quantity license or something? No, it's a feature, and it sell, it's uh, licensed in hundred meg chunks. So just because you have a a one gig link, for instance, doesn't mean you have to buy a, a one gig of WAN optimization. You could uh, you could use a ratio of sixty percent. It all depends on your traffic, what you're doing. Uh, and what you're looking to accomplish. Uh, the capabilities inside WAN optimization are pointed towards TCP applications. And, and you know, we're, we're all about uh, compressing data that goes into the cloud that you get charged for when it leaves the cloud. Uh, we're all about uh, latency improvements when you have an international link uh, between, say, uh, America and Asia. What I'll do right now is I'll do exactly what I just did. I'm going to drag the same file over. And you can see the difference down below. See how much faster it is. So we're actually optimizing this data, compressing it, increasing a, a WAN optimization window sliding in the TCP uh, connectivity. And we'll take a look at it here now in the flows table. And you can see here, this is our second FTP connection. See the applications identified here. And if you look, you'll see that instead of using 102 meg, we use 260K uh, at WAN outbound to the uh, to the San Francisco site. So that's uh, more than a significant uh, uh, increase in uh, efficiency. Uh, and this is really what we bring to the table. Uh, some call us some call SD-WAN a router on steroids. We certainly could brag and say that uh, because WAN optimization, uh, the capability to uh, automate your your flows, all of that is uh, and the ability to do OSF, OSPF and BGP just as a router does. All of that makes uh, SD-WAN a very compelling story. And finally, I'll just stay on this table for a second 
This is called our flow monitor table, and this is a uh, singularly unique uh, feature that uh, competitively speaking, nobody else has. Instead of using Wireshark, you could use our flow monitoring uh, and we'll give you a breadth of information. Uh, as you can see here, I could identify the overlay. If I click over here real quickly, you'll see that I get all sorts of information on what's going on here. Uh, if I went to apps performance, I could uh, pull up some information, transaction duration, uh, you know, information that's useful when you're troubleshooting. So uh, one of the first things we use when we troubleshoot is we go to the flow monitoring table and each one of these connections is a flow. So, uh, you know, it's much easier to uh, digest than uh, a simple uh, wire shock, which we do support, by the way. Any other questions, guys? That that's really sums up what we were trying to accomplish today in this demo. So if uh, no one else has any other questions, I have, I have one more final one for you, uh, Brian. So to realize the benefits of the WAN optimization and um, path conditioning, do, do you need Silver Peak appliances on both sides of that connection, or can you only have, do you only need it on one side? It's true. You do need a edge connect device on both sides, whether it's virtual or whether it's uh, in the cloud virtual or whether it's a physical one. So you do need uh, edge connects on both endpoints. The okay, that best. makes a lot of sense. I mean, you're reconstructing those streams and stuff on either end, so it would need to be aware of the, the conversation on both sides. Absolutely. All right. Thanks for your time today. My pleasure. Well, thank you both. That does thank conclude you. our demonstration for today. And again, I do want to thank you, Brian, for giving today's demonstration and Mike for your time as well uh, in conducting this demonstration. For those who have any questions following the demonstration, you can email us at cloud at vandis.com. You can also visit our events page at vandis.com slash events for any upcoming events that you might be interested in. And I just want to say thank you and enjoy the rest of your day.